Why is it growing up in Kagui? Uh, interesting. You know, at the end of the day, you're still a minority in the city. I've had my fair share of uh, run-ins with the law, not because I invited it, it's because they saw me as a black male walking through communities as a threat. As a young person, 14 years old, I had five guns in my face, just walking home from my parents' place. Ain't no way. I swear to God. Surprise. Ah. Welcome to Calgary. Today I'm going to be hanging out with AK Slim and a whole bunch of local artists. We're going to talk about their music, but also what it's like to grow black in the city. And let's go. How is it growing back here? Growing black in uh, in Calgary, in the west coast of Canada, man. My whole life I've been struggling with my race, bro. Like, like I feel like my complexion's really of a it's a really hard complexion to know. Like, you can't look at me, you know where I'm from. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kids would make fun of me a lot of times and shit. Like, call me mulatto. Like, oh, you mulatto kid. Like, call me soft because I was like lighter skin and shit. Like, I used to live in like a whiter community and stuff. A lot of white kids around me. There's like less black kids and stuff. So like, a lot of the white kids that want to hang out with me and shit are like. It'd be around me because I was black, like I was the only black kid, you know? Because back in those days, there wasn't no black people out here and shit. Now shit's changed, bro, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I found myself to be the only quote unquote black kid in any class I was in up until probably like grade nine, you know? Grade seven, eight, nine. You know, it's, it was a real weird experience at first because it's like you don't really see anybody like you, so you have to try to blend in with other with other demographics. You know, I, went, I, was, I grew up in Northeast Calgary, you know, a heavy, heavy Indian and, and East Indian population, you know. For, like for me, I was always like the minority and stuff, right, you know? Even going to like other kids' houses, their parents would be like, kind of, they kind of look at you like, sketch, like, you know, different, you know? They think you're sketchy because you're black, but you don't, they don't know, like, you know? your values and stuff. Damn. Being black in the city, again, is obviously being an outlier, mm -hmm. being a unicorn, being unique, just for walking in the streets. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just even being yourself is, is uh, you know, against oppression, right? Because again, you're standing out. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to speak in any kind of way. You just look different. Mm -hmm. So carrying yourself is badly against oppression as well, right? So of course you have people who can say things to you directly, but unfortunately Canada is also very covert, so you have people that will say things to you behind your back. You'll have people that'll stop you from doing things behind your back, you know? So you had a lot of people not wanting to see hip hop in their spaces, not wanting to allow hip hop to be a positive representation of any kind of art form, not wanting to see hip hop have an opportunity to make revenue or yeah. to create opportunity or jobs for people. So. Yeah, there was a lot of roadblocks initially, yeah. but you also had people in the city that definitely wanted to see change, so. Yeah. Well, it was hard because, like, I was raised in an area where there wasn't any black people. We were, mm. like, the black family in, you know, our area. Yeah. So we were, I was raised in Northwest Calgary. It's not a place where there's a lot of black people. I guess the Dawadu family were mm. known here in Calgary because of my father's presence yeah. um, in the community, in the African community. So he's already been well known and then um, my nephew popped up, yeah. um, you know, and he's, you know, doing his thing as a UFC fighter. So, um, the Dawadu name is very, it's a recognizable name <laughs> here. Fighting at a Calgary Airport in Canada, Mean Hakeem Dawadu! Outside is cold, weather is cloudy So many niggas out here trying to doubt me Young Safi nigga, take over Calgary Standing alone, we standing out proudly as, as a youth in Calgary, did you struggle with like whatever, you know? Think about yourself a little okay, bit I'll, I'll, Yeah, I'll tell you about me um, I was born uh, here in Calgary yeah. My mom had me when she was 14 um, My dad came here from Jamaica uh, for sprinting So I'm half Jamaican, half Nigerian And uh, my dad got deported when I was about 6 years old um, I went into, you know, foster care around the age of 13, just dealing with some stuff, um, you know, and I've been through it all. I started off, you know, selling drugs, in and out of juvie, you know what I mean? And, no choice, no choice. And uh, luckily, uh, you know, my probation officer let me off on health surveillance. I was on health surveillance for about two years, and I found uh, kickboxing. Mm. And I was able to write my kickboxing off as anger management, get my probation down, get my community service hours down, 
and I was just a natural at it. And before that, I was already known in the streets for street fighting. I used to, I used to knock bare niggas out. That's, that's just facts. Yo, that, you you know te- that's, that's dope. Facts, you, you, know? tell, you tell me kickboxing was your way out of jail. Yeah, kickboxing. I, Mike Miles Muay Thai kickboxing. My, my trainer, John Mike Miles, wrote my probation officer a letter saying, yo, this kid, he's on the right path. Let him do his thing. And, you know, literally three months later, I was already fighting. Damn, yeah, that's a blessing for you, man. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely a blessing. I could have, uh, I could have went the other way. I got a lot of friends that are still stuck, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to set a good example, and uh, you know, just, just, it's good to have, you know, a public figure for for some of these these younger cats that look like them, that, mm-hmm. that dress like them, that act like them, but that's on the right path. Yeah. What what are the positive changes that have happened since your youth out of jail now kick like UFC fighting? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Like you know, one of the the positives is uh, first thing I learned was obviously discipline. You know what I mean? When you start martial arts, you know you got to be at a place at a certain time. You got to put in a certain amount of hours. You gotta you gotta meet a standard. Mm. So it taught me discipline. Uh, and also, when you get taught discipline, you also are on a schedule. So you get on a routine. So you start you know getting getting your life on track, you know what I mean? I can't go out, I wasn't able to go out and party and, and do this and that with my friends because I knew the next day I had hard training. So it got me off drugs, it got me off the street, and it also, it got me traveled, you know what I mean? Before I started fighting, the only places I ever been to was, was really home, Jamaica and, and stuff like that. But fighting then, showed me the world and it made me want more than just selling drugs out of Dover, you know what yeah. I mean? That's, that, that's some small-minded stuff. So you know when you get traveled like that, you get you get you get a, a universal feel of, of of cultures and and, and you know you just you just want to see the world and you just want to uh, grow. Man, how does it feel to be like you know born and raised in Calgary, you know, young black kid, you you made it that far? Like how does it feel, bro? Because you you you're an example for so many people. You know, coming up in Calgary, it was. Uh, it's kind of whack. Like when I was young, it wasn't like the biggest black community here. You know what I mean? And even and even back then, the blacks in the city were, were really segregated. Like you know, African niggas only kept with African niggas. Jamaican niggas only kept with Jamaican niggas. Ethiopian. You know what I mean? But now it's it's 2023. You see everybody coming together, and it's just black people. You Big know what mixing pot. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just love and black people, yeah. and you know you're starting to see a, a bit more people come together, and uh, you know it, it's exciting now. You know I'm really enjoying the love, and uh, you know everybody's supporting no matter where you're from. It's all yeah. it's all love. We all come from Mother Africa, so I think I think the the neighborhood has evolved um, positively, right? Because when I was a kid, it was violent. Like Shag was violent. I'm happy to say that it's way more safe. Right, considering that now we have a police station that's like, you know, not even four minutes away. So the response time is a lot better than what it was, you know, years ago. It's definitely a lot, a lot safer. I feel like back in the day, there wasn't as a lot of black people in Cal- in Calgary as there is now. My dad's from Africa, you know what I mean? So my mom's from Calgary and shit. She's born in the same hospital, like, you know? So she, for her growing up in Calgary, there's not as much black people as now. So she said that, like, she was the only black person in, like, her whole grade. You know what I mean? Her whole grade. People were sometimes the only black person in the whole school. She said that she would go trick-or-treating and the people put needles in the black kids' candies and shit. The thing about Calgary is it doesn't necessarily have its own culture. Like, you know how some people can tell, oh, this person's from Toronto or this person's from New York or this person's from California, Miami, whatever the case is, based on the way they speak, based on, you know, what they dress, how, all that type of shit. Because there's certain cultures that come with certain cities, but, I mean, Calgary's culture has been like cowboy shit and oil and gas for like a hundred years, you feel me? So it's crazy to me because like, it's almost as though at this point in time, we're at the base of culture. You know, we're almost like building Calgary's, what, what some people might call urban culture. Even some from like within five years, the city changes fast, yo. Yeah. Way more, way more black people when yeah, you think more, about yeah, a Jew. Way more black people, the African community is yeah. getting bigger, you know, better, you know? There's even like, there's like even like African community centers now, you know? A lot of kids weren't proud to be black, right? 
you always, you would always, uh, I remember like growing up black, you try to have as many white friends as you could because that was cool. But now we live in a time where like being black is awesome. Being black is beautiful, right? Everybody wants to be black, you know what I'm saying? Now kids are more open and are more welcoming to the idea of being black than it was when I was younger. And I think Calgary is starting to show that, especially with like um, the pop-up of like black culture. A lot of black events, a lot of, you know, Nigerian, Somalian, you know, Kenyan, right? Like so many, so many African um, uh, parties and events. What's, what's, up, man? what's, what's up, man? What's up? Peace what's up? What's your name? Uh, Adam Masai, what's good, bro? This is New West, this is our event. New West. New West. All right, bro, bro, bro. That's your event? It's our event. Oh, how do you feel about it, man? You happy or what? You proud Fantastic, of it? bro. It's amazing. We've been doing it for five years, you know what I mean? We're coming up. Happy decade. Uh, happy decade. Blowing up every single year, getting better and better, bigger and bigger, and more people, more artists. Better music, better stage, better speakers. You know, dope I mean? man, dope man. Underground shit, you know what I mean? Socks with dear mama. I wanna thank you for your time and all the plans you rearranged to make them work with mine. All the ways you lift me up until I touch the sky. I wanna call for you. Yeah, we can turn down the bass. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's up on the hill. Everybody can hear. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. That's fair. You probably get complaints once a year around this time. Yeah. It's I guarantee you, if you check the records once a year, yeah. this probably happens. We have this event once a year. It's just an artist showcase. It's our studio, so we run a recording studio in here. We also do programs for kids. It's called Rap Camp, Rhythm and Poetry Camp, yeah. teaching kids how to come to terms with their thoughts and emotions through music creation. Yeah. So uh, we do a bunch of that here, and this is like one of the showcases where some of those kids through that program get a chance to perform and kind of bring it to accumulation of what it is. So we apologize. We'll turn down the bass for sure. Absolutely. Just tell us what happened today, bro. What do you mean what happened today? Like That's right now or just today? Today, today bro. Today was, uh, you know, New West Fest, the fifth uh, annual barbecue that we have for our studio, trying to give a platform to local artists to showcase their talent with uh, people that appreciate lyricism and raw music creation. We actually decided to have an EDM night as well. So for the last three years, we've done one event on Friday and this is the event on Saturday. You know what I mean? Different kind of musics, all artistry, all creation coming through New West. I'm gonna give you a little piece of insight. You know what I mean? I just, did a, I just did a speaking series for black youth at the University of Calgary through social justice and spatial awareness. And they asked about what are some emerging issues inside the black community. And one of the things that I realized that people don't realize is that we are under not physical attack as much as we were in the past. We are under less physical attack, but we're under more sociological and systemic attacks in ways that people don't even understand. And even though we run a recording studio that promotes hip hop and rap music and all this stuff, the issue that exists now is that a lot of people forget that this is purely entertainment. You know what I mean? You gotta think about some of the biggest artists in the world, what they promote, what they rap about, what they glorify. And there's two things. It's being a real nigga and being a bad bitch. Being a real nigga is somebody that has no morals, no values, no loyalty, is by themselves out there, lone wolf. Being a bad bitch is somebody that extorts people, is raw and rugged and does whatever for her own personal benefit for monetary gain. It took me a long time to realize how hip hop and how music actually inspired the way that I operate and the way that I perceive people. You know what I mean? I used to see a black man that looked like me and for some reason I would wanna, you know, grill and wait until one of us head nodded. And it's because of the shit that I was ingesting. What you feed your brain is what you will become, and that's it. That's it. That's it. Hey, thanks, thanks, man. Thanks for the time.